Hey everybody, welcome to Franny Square and to part two of how to crochet an easy three-piece v-neck sweater. Today we're going to be working on the sleeves. Okay, so at this point, you should have your body piece done. It looks like this, a rectangle with a slit in the middle for your V-neck, and you figured out where you want your V-neck. So to figure out how long we want our sleeves, I actually put the body piece on. It's not sewn along the sides or anything. It's just the big rectangle. There we go. And I just put it on like this. So you can see I have just the sweater on, I try to center it where my v-neck's gonna be. And I just look at how far this comes down on my arm. Now, if you remember, when I designed this sweater, I used, here's the sweater that I designed. I totally forgot to take into account how long this piece came down. And so I made my sleeves way too long. So that's why we're trying this on and we're gonna see how far our sleeve already comes down and then we'll just add on to that. So I know my sleeve comes to about here and I'm gonna want the length from here to the end of my arm. Okay, so if I take my tape measure and as I've said before, I, I really like a long sleeve. And if you look at where the 18 inches hits, that's about the length I want. You can make any length sleeve you want. You can make it down to here, you can make it a short sleeve, you could really just end it here if you want to and make it more like a vest but I'm gonna make my sleeves 18 inches long. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my paper and pencil, and I'm gonna figure out how many stitches I need to make this 18 inches long. Because again, we're gonna be crocheting this way, and that's gonna be the length of our sleeve so the stripes go down. Okay, so for the number of rows that you'll need, what you wanna do is measure around your arm in the biggest spot, if you have big biceps, maybe make a muscle because you don't want, when you bend your arm, your sleeve to be too tight. I tend to go a little loosely, just so I have room. All right, so loosely this says about 13 inches. So that's gonna be the number I'm gonna use for the width of my sleeve. And then when it comes down, I am not gonna taper or anything. I like it to kind of bell out. And again, these are design decisions that you can make. If you wanna just follow along, we're gonna just do a straight rectangle for the sleeves. All right, so let's get our pen and our pads out. Remember to have your calculations of your swatch, how many stitches, how many rows per four inches. And then we're going to take these measurements and do our calculations and come up with how many stitches and rows we need for each sleeve. Okay, so for our calculation, we have the four inch by four inch swatch and I had 17 stitches and nine and a half rows for that swatch. The length of the sleeve, I wanna make 18 inches. So to figure out how many stitches I need for the length of the sleeve, because remember we're crocheting this direction and I'm gonna to wanna to turn it. So my stitches are gonna be the length so that my stripes are going down. So to figure out the number of stitches I need for 18 inches, I take my 17 stitches divided by the four inches, that's my swatch numbers, and that gives me the number of stitches per inch. I'm gonna multiply it by 18 inches and I get 76 and a half stitches, but I'm gonna round down to 76 stitches. This stitch requires an even number of stitches because we're doing that crisscross pattern and I don't wanna go all the way up to 78. I know that I already was conservative in how long I want my sleeve, so I can afford the half of a stitch. So I'm gonna do 76 stitches for my piece. Then for the width, I measured the biggest part of my arm and I got 13 inches. And I know that I have nine and a half rows per four inches. So this gives me the number of rows per inch I want 13 inches, so I multiply by 13, and I get 30.875 rows. So I'll round up to 31. I like to have an odd number so that I have an exact center row to line up with my shoulder seam. 
So once you have those numbers, now you know what you need to do. I need to make two rectangles, 76 stitches by 31 rows. So just like before, I'll get my hook and I'll just show you the stitch again. So if I want it to be 76 stitches, I have to start with 76 chains plus two. The two are my turning chain, so I will need 78 chains. So I'm just gonna start chaining. I'm not gonna do all 78 here. I'm just gonna do, I'll do 22. Uh, that way I can just show you what I'm doing without wasting a lot of your time. <laughs> so now from in the fourth chain from the hook, I'm gonna do a half double crochet. Then I'm going to go back to the third chain from the hook, the one right before that, and do a half double crochet. That's my first crisscross. And then we're back to our pattern. I skip a chain, go into the next one with a half double crochet, and go back to the chain I skipped, do a half double crochet, just like that. And I'm going to keep doing that pattern all the way across until I get to the end. Okay, so now I'm at the last two stitches, last two chains. I'm going to put a half double crochet in the last, go back to the one before it, do a half double crochet, and then I'm going to chain two, turn my work, and then I just start back skipping the first stitch, going into the second, and then going back to the first, just like we did in the body piece. If you need to refresh yourself on the stitch, you can also go to the first part of this tutorial where we did the body piece, and I went a little more slowly with the stitch. And you're just gonna keep doing that until you have two rectangles the size of your sleeves. So here's the one I've been working. I'm actually on row 29 out of 31. This is my sleeve piece and I'm just going to make two rectangles. Okay when you're finished with that we will get to part three where we put the whole thing together. Okay that's it. That's all it takes to make the sleeves. Very simple. Finish both sleeves and then shortly part three will be coming out where we put the whole thing together. If you have any questions about anything we've done so far, put your questions in the comments below so everybody else can see them and see the answers. Or if you'd prefer, send them to my email address at frannysquare at gmail.com. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to make it your own and I'll see you soon.